Hello. Derek Lewis is one of those weird fighters where, consistently, he beats fighters who are more skilled than him. Curtis Blades had more tools, more threats, more overall options when it comes to mixed martial arts, but when it comes to Derek Lewis, he leaves many of us wondering, why? Why doesn't mixed martial arts work on him? Why doesn't mixed martial arts work on Derek Lewis? He can comfortably handle a black belt in jiu-jitsu, jujitsu, and combat sambo on the ground with his blue belt. Getting touched up by the elite striking of Alexander Volkov. Boom! One punch from there ends the fight. Derek Lewis is just one of those fighters who always has that great equalizer in his back pocket. Power. One mistake. And boom. As Bruce Lee had said, I fear not the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. He just has that one shot that could instantly change the course of the bout. His thick, dense bone structure paired with his durability, he just has a freight train loaded up in his right hand. And so, that one mistake, boom. You cannot lose composure, you cannot take him for granted, you cannot underestimate him. You can't let yourself make one mistake versus Derek Lewis because he has the same ability possessed by Deontay Wilder. Even if you're perfect for 99% of the fight, all he needs is one second. You can be perfect the entire fight, he just needs to be perfect for one second. From there, the whole story is rewritten. In that sense, a fighter like Daniel Cormier, who can consistently apply various forms of pressure, all the while making fewer overall mistakes, he can stifle out that great equalizer despite being a smaller man. Daniel Cormier is just tighter in his execution, more methodical, more intelligent in his overall approach without losing focus as he's consistent, as he mixes between wrestling and striking, which is why he handily stuffed the threat possessed by Derek Lewis. But making that mistake, the moment you do, that's what we end up seeing here. Derek Lewis's entire style was clearly focused on delivering a bolo uppercut versus Curtis Blades, particularly when Curtis was going for a shot. You could see him throwing it throughout. Curtis Blades, on the other hand, he was more so feinting the wrestling to keep Derek's hands low, thus he would effectively touch him up high. This was working wonders for Curtis Blades. Derek Lewis loading up quite frequently. He was doing something you'd see quite often amongst Mexican style boxers. Derek Lewis, he would throw with load up and change the trajectory of the punch during the windup. In essence, using the telegraph to cause a flinch, he was trying to time his punches against the flinch he would read. Playing that game was not easy for Derek. He was having trouble finding his timing. But the moment he did, it was the same technique we saw Gervonta Davis use versus Leo Santa Cruz. Throwing the lead hand out as a counterbalance, it accelerates Derek Lewis's slip, which allows him to get deeper, quicker on his uppercut. Thus, with the same loadup he was using for his cross, pivoting his hips into a strike, he straight up devastated Curtis Blades. You can tell. Derek Lewis practiced this a lot, specifically for this fight. It's why he was getting tagged a lot on the feet. He was looking for this specific punch. When you look for something in particular, it can leave you open elsewhere. That's kind of what happens when you try to force a specific move. You may end up being open elsewhere. But that moment Curtis Blaze went in was the moment Derek's preparation met its timing. His durability and calm, patient approach inevitably gave Derek Lewis the window. He was touching Curtis here and there after all. Curtis Blades was inevitably going to shoot. His entire philosophy after all is, I don't care if I'm boring, I'm going to feed my family, I'm going to win. And with Derek Lewis, the risk of stand and bang was just too great. The feints as well, setting up the shot, they lacked intention. Derek, calm, 
He didn't bite down on the feints. He could feel them for what they were. They weren't real strikes. It's a hard concept to explain entirely, but someone like Alexander Volkanovsky, Corey Sandhagen, or Israel Adesanya, these fighters, fighters like these, they are masters at not just fainting, but delivering them with intention. They have intention behind their feints. They put slight body weight to help sell the feint, sell the lie. They truly make you feel like they're going to do something. Intention. It's an emotional intelligence army. Their feints with the illusion of real intention. They don't just pump out an arm. They treat all of their feints like an art, full of intention, but with Curtis Blades. They did not have the intention to actually fool Derek. Thus, when he went in for a shot, Derek Lewis, he saw it a mile away. Boom, straight up collision. With the G-forces involved between these two large individuals, the lights, they just had no choice but to go out. You can't make a mistake on Derek Lewis. You just can't make a mistake. When he possesses the kind of power he possesses, one mistake walking that tightrope could cost consciousness itself. That's often what distinguishes the elite of the arena. Just look at Daniel Cormier. It's not that they are the strongest or most physically imposing. Instead, the one who's trained a capacity, refined the ability to make fewer mistakes in the moment. The one who can consistently walk that tightrope of life. That's what separates them from the rest. That's an intriguing paradox, isn't it? The more mistakes you make in the gym, the gym of life, the fewer mistakes you'll make as you learn throughout that process. That is the game of life. To fall off the bike over and over again. To reflect on why until you just stop falling and start building momentum. It's absolutely paradoxical, but it's a game we all play to some extent. To that end, thank you Derek Lewis and Curtis Blades for this lesson. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, peace.